Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Jixiang Jun in Beijing. And today we're continuing with our major series in which we are illustrating the evolution of Chinese civilization through an investigation of archaeological discoveries, historical sites and cultural relics. Following the glory periods of the Han and Tang dynasties, China in the middle of the 10th century entered the Song dynasty. Now, Song China is considered a golden age in the country's history. It was a time when China led the world in science and technology. The Song dynasty also witnessed the emergence of numerous scholars whose expertise covered a remarkable number of fields. After the glories of the Han and Tang dynasties, China entered the Song dynasty, which lasted from the year 960 to the year 1279. The Song dynasty is considered a high point in Chinese history, a time when China led the world in science and technology. The Song dynasty saw the rise of numerous scholars in many fields, and through their efforts, science and technology in China reached a level that makes today's Chinese still feel proud. Under a beach in the city of Quanzhou in Fujian province, a well-preserved secret has been uncovered. A boat constructed during the Song dynasty more than 700 years ago. With a length of 34 meters, this boat accommodated three masts and 13 sealed compartments, and it had a load capacity of over 200 tons. It is the oldest fully intact wooden boat unearthed in the world, but it was not the largest boat constructed in the Song dynasty. By that time, the construction of very large boats with a length of over 100 meters and a load capacity of more than 1,000 tons was already taking place. While being used at sea, the compass not only greatly facilitated navigation in the Song Dynasty, but also played an important role in another remarkable achievement in the history of human civilization, the Maritime Silk Road. The unearthing of this ship reveals clearly the hermetic compartment sealing techniques used in the Song Dynasty. Experts have concluded that this invention was a miracle in the world history of boat construction, one that made safe navigation possible. It is an irrefutable fact that the hermetic compartment technique developed in the Song Dynasty is still in use in the modern shipbuilding industry. In ancient China, today's city of Quanzhou went by the name Port Zetong, and the prosperous sea trade of the Song Dynasty made Quanzhou world famous. At that time, many foreigners travelled to the city and some of them came just to visit a bridge called Wan An Bridge. Wan An Bridge was the oldest bridge in the world even then, and it was the longest stone bridge over water. The bridge was about 1200 metres long and 5 metres wide and boasted 47 span openings. Construction began on Wan An Bridge in the fifth year of the Huang Yo reign, the year AD 1053, and it took six years to complete. In the world history of bridge construction, Wan'an Bridge was the first to use ship-like stone piers that were sharp-edged on both sides. But how were these megaliths raised at such a time without advanced equipment? After research, Experts have discovered that the ancient Chinese laid stone piers when the tide was low and used the liquid secreted by oysters to bind the piers and footstones together. Wan'an Bridge is another miracle in the history of the Chinese nation.
During the Song Dynasty, Zhuanzhou developed into a seaport known far and wide. Together with the port of Alexandria in Egypt, Zhuanzhou was regarded as one of the two largest trade ports in the world. Sunday的海外贸易,一个很重要的港口是福建的学究港。福建学究港当时跟海外啊很多地区都有联系。东边呢是桥街贝岛,日本列岛,西边一直到印度洋地区,到布斯湾,到阿拉巴贝岛,到
《沈括梦记笔谈》卷十八这段记载。照着这段记载，他就制造出来了《尼活字》。沈括 was the only person to record in book form that the invention of movable type printing is attributable to Bi Sheng. Nowadays, it would be said that Bi Sheng was simply an engraving worker, but perhaps it is fitting that an engraving worker would have such an impact on the development of ancient Chinese scientific invention and technological innovation. Paper making, one of the four great inventions of ancient China, had been developed earlier in the Western Han Dynasty some 2,000 years ago. However, the paper made at that time was primitive, was loose in texture, and was not particularly ideal for writing. However, during the Yuan Qing reign of the Eastern Han Dynasty, not long afterwards, Cai Luan greatly improved papermaking techniques. Before that time, Chinese characters were engraved on pottery, animal bones, articles of bronze, and bamboo slips. But the use of these items as writing media resulted in the loss of many important historic documents. Thanks to the invention of Tai Ho paper by Tai Luan, the diffusion of Chinese civilization underwent a fundamental innovation. The spread of paper making to lands outside China brought about an epoch-making revolution in the development of writing materials and completely changed the way people wrote. The age of paper and the history of human civilization began in China. Although papermaking was not invented during the Song Dynasty, papermaking techniques were developed to a high level in the Song Dynasty. The Song era saw the appearance of bamboo paper, which was smooth, ink absorbent, and highly suited to writing. After having tested bamboo paper, the famous man of letters Su Dongpo exclaimed that he felt much luckier than his ancestors. Song-era books were printed in large numbers.